Hey, what is up, internet? Welcome back to Switch It Off and On Again. And today we're talking about principles. I've worked in many organisations during my IT career, and if I think back to those that were probably more successful than others, they all have one thing in common. They all had very well-defined service principles about how they operate, how they do business, and why they do those activities. In contrast, if I think about the companies I've worked in where those things weren't present, what that usually resulted in was a level of confusion, disorganisation, conflict and chaos. Now when we talk about principles, I don't mean maybe those four or five value words that most companies tend to have plastered on the wall somewhere in the office. You know, things like integrity, honesty, trust. Uh, you know, as important as those things are. What I mean are tangible guiding principles that guide those working within an organisation on how to operate in support of those corporate values. Having guiding principles relating to your IT services and how they are managed and operated well, is crucially important in my opinion. First off, they should be universally applicable to any IT service, project, operation, team or individual. Therefore, they should provide the necessary guardrails and guidance when it comes to designing, building, implementing, operating or managing IT services. This means that those teams doing that activity should have a reference point of how services are to be managed and provide clear direction and minimise confusion. For example, you may opt for an incident management principle that states all incident tickets must be stored in a single repository. Now on the face of it, you're probably thinking, duh, of course, that's commonplace in every organisation, right? Well, yeah, typically it is, but think about the company you work for or the ones that you've worked for in the past, and I bet there has been an occasion whereby for a specific service, that principle has not been applied. There may, be, may have been a certain service where tickets don't follow the standard principle policy and process, and maybe they are tracked in an alternative way, reported in a different way, you know, maybe stored on an Excel spreadsheet rather than your ITSM toolset. In that scenario, there would be certain implications as a result of those tickets being tracked separately. Uh, first, you're not going to be able to easily report on those tickets consistently with how you measure other services. Uh, the user experience for reporting issues may be different uh, and, and other processes like problem management may struggle to be applied if those incident tickets are handled in a different way and, and so on. Now imagine that scenario but amplified. Imagine that principle doesn't exist at all and on a per service basis tickets are stored in a bespoke way. Well, it kind of goes without saying, but I will anyway, that your IT service delivery would result in chaos and one that would be well unmanageable, not to mention the horrific experience uh, your end users would likely have. Now I've found when working in organisations that don't have well-defined principles, implementing them can have huge benefits really quickly. First of all, it promotes consistency and commonality across your teams. Well, why is that important? Well, firstly, it makes your service delivery and management more efficient which results in a greater end user experience who know what to expect and when. It certainly reduces rework and repetition, meaning less manual duplicated bespoke activity and the opportunity to automate reducing the cost of delivery and management. Secondly, I've found that it really increases employee engagement. You know, with clear boundaries, clear direction, it allows those involved in the management of the services the necessary guidance uh, without having to second guess and check every five minutes or well, how should this work again or no one tells me how I'm supposed to do this uh, and finally as I've sort of mentioned it hugely benefits the end user experience and allows for the delivery of value back to your customers so that's why we bother with principles let's talk a little bit about how these are constructed So let's first consider whose job it is to come up with these service principles. Now, I'm a believer that this should certainly be driven from those in senior positions. However, they are not or should not be simply things handed down like manna from heaven. Um, as we'll see, service principles can cover a wide variety of areas. And it's important that we don't have conflicting principles. So there needs to be uh, the need for oversight for, for certain checks and balances. However, I think it's really important to involve the relevant parts of the IT organisation in crafting these principles if you're looking to achieve that buy-in and engagement I was talking about a moment ago. 
Firstly, being included in this process by definition means that you're not excluded, meaning the relevant people have a say and are bought into the concept of having these guiding principles and importantly, adopting them. The, the role of senior management is to ensure those proposed principles do support the strategy, do align to the vision and corporate values, and that the principles as a collective are supportive of one another. And do they support the strategy of the IT department? Do they support the company values? And of course, when it comes to adoption, without senior buy-in and drive, it's questionable how well these principles can truly be adopted. They are, after all, a set of statements about how we do things, not how you do things, uh, but the rules are different for me or different for this uh, other part of the department. So uh, thinking about that, let's look at what these principles should cover. Now, uh, presumably you're going to want to document and publish this stuff. So think about the structure of that at the outset. I think it's a good idea to, to carve up your service principles into different sections to cover specific areas. I think it's a good idea to firstly cover overarching principles or principles that apply to any and every IT service, any IT process, function, individual and task. These should be very closely aligned with any vision statements and may include things like uh, we'll measure what matters to our users and report on these regularly or will be proactive rather than reactive whenever possible. A lot of the well-known, well-adopted frameworks have guiding principles, and in regards to overarching principles, a lot of those can be utilised for this purpose. You know, For example, in ITIL 4, we have guiding principles like keep it simple and practical, or progress iteratively with feedback. Similarly, in the Agile Manifesto, it calls out we value responding to change rather than following a plan fairly similar in tone to that progress iteratively with feedback principle. Then I believe it's very worthwhile having a set of principles that talks about the organisation of the IT department and the people within it. Every organisation has an organisation structure and operating model and the organisational principle should reflect and maintain that design. I don't mean you have to have principles that say the infrastructure team will report into the head of technology but more so the principles about why the department is structured in the way it is. You know, for example, uh, systems will be centrally managed to add value and reduce risk through local support. Or uh, all processes or services provided by IT will have a named process service owner. Um, then we get into the more detailed categories of service principles. And typically I see these in, in four main camps. First off, uh, principles about technology itself. Uh, principles about the various processes used by IT, principles about data, and finally, principles about specific functions or capabilities. What do I mean by that? Um, you, well, you may want a set of principles that talk about the service desk or a set of principles that describe your approach to sourcing. Uh, it's typical that this last section about functions or capabilities can stray into areas already covered by the other categories. So it's really important to ensure consistency. Uh, you know, for example, service desk principles will heavily reference your incident and request process principles, most likely. So that covers the sort of structure you want your principles to cover, but then you should consider what makes a good principle. And, and yet there are good and bad principles, I'm afraid. Uh, good principles typically consist of only one or two directly and simply worded sentences. They should be widely applicable and not be outdated by um, advancements in technology, for example. They should be objective and they should be self-aware, clearly stating the impacts or implications of the principle being adopted. On the other hand, bad examples of um, service principles, well, typically the statement is too difficult to dispute or is too general. They can be stated at too low a level or they may name specific products or technologies. Often with bad principles, uh, the rationale or implication may not be clear and may simply be due to the author's personal preference and you know, because I say so. For example, statements like the overall cost of IT should be reduced uh, or we will only use Microsoft technology. They, you know, those things would constitute poorly written principles. In regards to each principle, principle, should I say, as well as having the statement itself, 
it is a good idea to include a sample application of the principle and how it's going to be used. For example, if we had a change management principle of IT will utilise different change types to optimise the management of changes throughout the change cycle, you may want to give an example of how this is practically applied. Something like, the change process includes the facility for change requesters to log standard, normal and emergency changes. The ITSM toolset allows for changes to be prioritised on impact and risk, and CAB sessions will focus on high priority changes first. Then it's recommended to include a rationale that describes the reasons why the principle should be accepted by describing the benefits the principle should allow and effectively why bother, why is this important to us. Sticking with the example used so far, we may have a rationale for that principle of well, this principle ensures change effort focuses on those changes requiring the most attention first. It minimises discussions uh, and review time for changes that have low impact, helps focus attention on those changes that, that need it most. And finally, as I mentioned, the principles need to be almost self-aware. As a result of implementing this principle, what does that mean to the organisation, to IT, to users, to people within the IT department? Things like uh, what needs to be done if this guiding principle is, is uh, implemented, uh, what impact will it have on the business and IT units, what kind of behaviours, uh, tools, data or processes need to be in place in order to support the principle we're proposing. Again, for consistency, let's keep with that example used this far. Uh, and the implications of that principle might be something like, we have put change classification and priority mechanisms into place within our ITSM toolset. We create CAB agendas that address high priority changes first. We have criteria in place that dictates how changes should be classified. So recapping, what you're aiming for is a documented set of principles, starting with those that apply to anything and everything that IT do. A set that cover uh, the organisation and people within it, uh, followed by principles that cover technology, processes, data, and finally capabilities or functions. Each individual principle, uh, and there can be many for each section, should contain a concise, clearly worded statement with an example of how this can be applied, supported by a clear rationale and implication. That sounds like a hell of a lot of work, doesn't it? Um, and starting from scratch, that might, might sound too daunting to even, to even bother. However, my advice, start small and iterate. Even with a handful of overarching principles, these can have a super positive effect and encourage those responsible for certain capabilities or processes to certainly follow suit. Yet, as covered in the ITIL guiding principles, focus on value, start where you are now, progress iteratively with feedback, collaborate and promote visibility, think and work holistically, and keep it simple and practical. Uh, on that point, let's leave it there for today. I, I hope you've enjoyed this video or found it of use. If you have, please, please leave me a thumbs up or a comment to let me know that you approve. And subscribe to this channel if you're interested in anything and everything to do with IT service management. Thanks for watching Switch It Off and On again, and I'll see you again next time.